the Chiefs are not a good run defense. They're 28th in number fires, opponent adjusted efficiency. They are 23rd in yards before contact allowed, 31st in rushing success rate allowed to running backs. So, look, the game script doesn't set up for Derrick Henry, but we know that Derrick Henry is going to get, again, probably 30 carries yeah. uh, unless they get blown out. Uh, but, I mean, he's going to be involved early, and he should be able to do some damage against this front. The thing that we talk about a lot on these smaller slates is making assumptions. You know, uh, it's cliche to say tell a story, but you should tell a story with your lineup. Do you think that the Chiefs are going to run away and hide? In that scenario, you can omit Derrick Henry from your lineups. But if we're looking at this from like a range of outcomes perspective, in what percentage of games do the Chiefs run away and hide? It's not. It's a non-negligible number because they're really freaking good, and this Titans' pass defense is not. They're ranked 14th for the full season, and I think Mahomes is going to be able to move the ball at will against this pass defense. But it's still not going to be a huge percentage, a huge chunk of the pie where the Chiefs run away and hide. You know, if you look at number fire, they give the Titans 32% odds of winning this game outright, which means that Derrick Henry is going to be a hyper-relevant play 32% of the time, and he'll be a hyper-relevant play in close games that they lose to. So the way I want to view him is, how often do you see the Chiefs running away and hiding? In those lineups, omit Derrick Henry. If it's not that lineup, you should use Derrick Henry. Even if they lose, like, he's been running a route on, like, 50% of the dropbacks during the playoffs. It's 16 to 31 per pro, fo- pro football focus, which is nuts. Um, <laughs> but, like, I think that even if they get behind, I my baseline assu- assumption would still be that he'll be on the field because they're a better passing offense with him out there, too. So... I think that even in a a game that they lose, as long as they don't get totally destroyed, Derrick Henry is still a good play for DFS. Yeah, it just seems like the path for Derrick Henry, aside from injury, which, you know, is just always something that we have to watch for. The the path for him to be completely phased out is the Chiefs put up like 28 points in in the first quarter. and they could do. (laughs) But like that's... Even with that, you know that Derrick Henry is going to get the ball. And the Chiefs are really going to have to sell out mm-hmm. to limit Derrick Henry. So I just – look, he, he's $9,800 on a two-game slate, and that is crazy for a back who does not get a lot of targets in receiving work. And receiving work correlates really well to a running back's floor. But uh, this offense has just been Derrick Henry, and I think that that's also going to kind of keep the game closer – because I, I just don't anticipate uh, Derrick Henry getting stuffed. Right. So, And I think that one thing that's noteworthy from a salary perspective is that last week in the divisional round, Derrick Henry ran for 198 yards, but he still was not in the perfect FanDuel lineup because he's so expensive. And when you use Derrick Henry, that means you're not getting to Patrick Mahomes, potentially, potentially not getting to Devonta Adams, Tyreek Hill, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey. There is a pretty massive opportunity cost. So what I was saying you should omit Derrick Henry in, in lineups where they get totally wiped. That's not the only scenario in which you can omit him because he can go off and still not be in the perfect lineup for this weekend. So I, I think that there are scenarios in which you omit him even when you think it's a closer game. But the only time where I'm going to absolutely omit him is where I assume the Chiefs absolutely torch things. 